Luke, Tom, Nate, and Jake here at the Catfish and Carp YouTube channel, and today we're going to be doing some bank fishing. We're going to give you lots of tips and tricks to catching more catfish from the bank, and we're doing a catfish catch and cook video. You guys ready? Yeah! Hey guys, welcome to my neighborhood lake, and today we are going to do some really basic but effective bank fishing for catfish. When it comes to fishing, the most important decision you're going to make is where to put your bait. Location is everything. And when I'm on a lake or a pond like this, often the best spots are not far away in the middle of the lake, but they're close. Deeper is not always better. So let me show you some great classic spots. Okay, see right there how we got a nice tree shading the water and you got about two, three feet of water underneath that tree. And you can see some sunken structure and logs down there. That is a great spot for a catfish to hide. See down here where we got this vegetation growing out of the water? That's emergent vegetation. And once again, we have more than about a foot and a half of water. So right on the edge of that emergent vegetation is a good spot. Lots of little fish and crayfish live in that muck. And if they stick their head out, a catfish is ready for them. Large piles of rocks, retaining walls, rip wrap or undercut banks, those are all great locations to target when bank fishing from catfish. And you don't have to cast out far. It can be just under your rod tip. Out in front of me is a big wide lagoon without a lot of features. It's pretty uniform in depth. So you wanna find some place unique, either a sunken tree or a little dip or a change in elevation. And that's what you wanna target. Out here, you can see that there's some branches sticking out. That little snag is going to be a good spot. It's a little far and I may not be able to reach it with my rods, but we're going to try. Additionally, out here to the right is an even shallower lagoon where it's only about three feet. And out here in front of me is about four to six feet. There's about a one or two foot step that goes right along from that point to this tree. That slope is a good spot. Slopes and points of land are always good places to target for catfish. I bet a lot of you guys at home are wondering, well, that's great and all, but how do I tell how deep the water is or where the underwater ledges are? If you don't have a fish finder, you can use a marker float. Marker floats are cheap and easy to make yourselves. You can buy them or you simply take a water bottle or a large bobber and you tie it on the end of your line. Then you take a large lead that's large enough to sink the bobber and you put it on a slider in between the float and your fishing rod. Then you cast it out into the water, anywhere you want to measure, and you pull that bobber down until it's right up against the lead on the bottom. Then you open your bale and you let out line until you see that bobber or float pop up to the surface. And you measure how much line does it take to get the float to come to the surface. And then you've measured the depth of the water. Reel in a good 10, 15 yards, repeat the process and measure again. And then you can tell the topography of the bottom of the water. You can figure out how deep it is, how much the water's changing. And I've done that in this spot many, many times. If you wanna see more information about marker floats, I have a more detailed video and I'll put a link in the video description for you. But if you have a bobber and a lead, you can figure out how deep the water is out there. Well, enough jibber jabber about location. I need to get some bait and get fishing, and I'm gonna be using bluegills today. I'm gonna to use them live and cut up. Hands down, the most effective catfish baits are natural baits. Uh, shad, bluegill, chubs, suckers, carp, things that the catfish are eating naturally. Uh, it's also free, and it's usually not as disgusting as stink baits. If you're in a situation where you can't get your hands on natural baits, there's a ton of great store-bought baits. Of course, there's chicken livers. Everyone knows about that, but they're kind of gross. There's also hot dogs and chicken breast. You can soak them in Jello or Kool-Aid to add a little extra flavor. I prefer to use sweet corn a lot. Also, I have a recipe of a dough bait, which involves strawberry Jello mix and panko and creamed corn or canned sweet corn, and that works pretty darn well. If you want to see a video with my list of my favorite catfish baits, I'll put a link in the description. There's a ton of options out there. And remember, which bait you use is not nearly as important as the location you choose. So worry more about location and less about bait. All right, today we are going to be catching bluegill. So hopefully we can find some bluegill or sunfish down here. Um, they're not legal to use in every state, so check your regulations. But if you can't use bluegill, Use creek chubs or suckers or whatever little fish you can get your hands on. 
All right, I've got all of our little dock rods for catching panfish, and I've got them tied together with one of those gear ties, the large industrial twisty ties that you get at the hardware store. Works great for transporting your rods. All right, so my little boys are gonna help us catch some bait, and I've got three different rods here. I've got the 36 inch whisker stick with an Abu Garciva Elite Max 10. Uh, for the reel. I've got this one rigged up for catfish, so I'm gonna set it aside and not use it for bait, but it also makes a great panfish rod. Next is the Dock Demon Deluxe. It's the same thing as the normal Dock Demon combo. It's just got an extra six inches of rod. Uh, you can get this for about 14 to 19 dollars for the rod reel and line either from walmart or amazon.com i'll put a link in the description but these are nearly indestructible great little rods for catching small catfish for catching bass for catching panfish whatever they don't cast particularly far but they're plenty strong uh, i caught uh, i think an 18 pound catfish on this once very strong. Next, I've got the Ugly Stick GX2, and I've got it paired with a Fluger President reel, and I've got some four pound line on it. All of these panfish rods are rigged with a number 12 hook and a bobber, and that's it, no weight or nothing. And we're gonna put a little worm on there and start catching some bluegill. Move the table closer to the rail so the boys can help me fish, and I've put the tiniest bit of worm on this number 12 hook. And I make sure you leave lots of hook point exposed and don't leave too much dangling bits of worm. You just want a tiny little morsel so the bluegill will bite the hook and not just the bait. Tommy, you find some worms? Yeah, I found a bunch of them. I found it under a man's suit that got lost under the outhouse. <laughs> I use the outhouse. Good Looking under the outhouse, great way to find worms. So the boys helped me dig up a bunch of earthworms and that's what we're using for bluegill bait here. I like using the native ones because they don't die in the heat like the Canadian night crawlers do. Yeah. Plus you don't have to pay for them. What? Just right about there. That's where you need to be. Oh, you already got a hit. Yeah, when you see the bobber go under, give it a nice little snap. Dirt, dirt. Oh, there you go, you got him. You jerked it and set the hook. Reel that up. Yeah, there we go, bait. guys. That is the perfect bait there. Look at that, right through the nose. You caught him perfect. All right. Hold on, you still got your worm. Why don't you go get some more? All right, guys, I'm gonna show you another trick. This is a $5 collapsible laundry mat from Ikea. And today, it's gonna be our live well. All right, we're gonna take the fish in here. Oh, you got another one? Yeah, is that quick? Nathan's already got another one. So what I do is I just come down here and just put this basket down in the muck. There we go, we got a rock here and uh, we just put it in the bottom of the basket so it can't tip over and we're good to go. I need the live well for two reasons. First, I wanna catch a flathead and flathead prefer live bait. So you need a live well if you wanna fish with live bait. Additionally, if you're gonna have leftover bait and you wanna let it go, you better keep it alive. And it's a great way to not waste all those bluegill that I may not need at the end of the day. Oh, there we go. They keep on my hooks. Hey, Jacob, good job, buddy. You like that? You got one, Tom? Oh, we got a double. We got a double here. Yeah, come on, reel him in. Yeah, bring him over to dad. Bring him over to dad. There you go. You like that? All right, so here are the rods I'm going to be using for catfishing. And I've got a little rod band keeping the, some of them together there. Little, got a little bit of Velcro on there. Great for transporting rods. And I'm going to start with this one right here which uh, is the Cabela's Mag Touch series. I've got a float on here, and I've got a number four shiner hook, and we're gonna be using that. It is a perfect size bluegill for a little channel catfish or a little flathead, and I've hooked them through the back, right, right by the end of the dorsal fin, and uh, we're gonna check them out there. When it's a calm day, I like using floats in still water because that fish can kind of swim around and cover a lot of area. And it's a really effective technique. You can also catch bass that way, flatheads, channel catfish, blues, you know, everything loves a live bluegill. So uh, we'll just kind of see what happens. Who knows, might even catch a snakehead. If you're bank fishing and you want a light action, long distance rod, I highly recommend this Okuma SST. It's technically a salmon rod, so it'll handle bigger catfish, I'd say up to 15, 20 pounds, no problem. Uh, but it is 
really long and it's got a stiff spine so it'll cast a small bait and a small lead very far and uh, i'm going to be using this one with a kind of a funky rig so i have a one ounce sand claw lead on a slider and i've got a little piece of fake corn on a number two hook on a hair rig i'm going to take some of my strawberry jello panko dough bait here and i'm going to mush it up and it's kind of the consistency of play-doh really kind of lovely fun stuff and unlike stink baits it smells wonderful nathan here loves to eat it no i do not eat it <laughs> now normally i put canned corn in this mix but i just didn't have it today so i'm going without and it still works really well but i tuck the hook in the bottom of the ball i'm gonna cast this thing out and i could catch a carp or a catfish the largest channel catfish i've ever caught was 23 pounds and i caught it on this bait with this rig this will catch big channel cats. So distracted looking at the bobber. I All right, so this bait, I cast it just like five feet off of that vegetation line. <laughs> okay, for this whisker stick rod, I've got a number six circle hook. I've got a one ounce pyramid lead on a slider. And I'm gonna take this bluegill head. I'm gonna hook it through the forehead and we're gonna chuck that out and let it sit on the bottom. For my final catfish rod, I've got the Whisker Seeker Chad Ferguson series, medium heavy power rod. It's the casting rod. And I've got the Abu Garcia Catfish Special, the 6500. I've got some crazy strong 50 pound line on here, but you don't really need that unless you're fishing for big fish and snags, which I often do. And I've got a three ounce cannonball lead and I've got a number eight Gamakatsu circle hook. The uh, bluegill body, and I'm gonna hook it on there just like so and this is a big catfish rig we can catch a 40 pounder on here or we could catch a little four or five pounder on here could go either way so this reel has a switch right here and when it's in the up position it activates the bait clicker so if a fish grabs this it'll make a nice loud noise that we can hear oh look at that oh Oh, look at this. Yeah, oh, yeah. look at that. We don't see a ton of those here. Man, that looks like a pumpkin seed. Well, I was sitting here and my bait clicker just went zzzz, took about a foot or so of line off, dropped the bait. What that means is my bait and hook were too big for the fish that bit that with that bait. And I'm using an eight-out Gamagatsu circle hook and a pretty good sized chunk of bluegill. So very well could have been a little two pound catfish. It just couldn't quite get the hook in its mouth. All right, it's been a little bit since I got that hit. So I'm gonna go ahead and reel in, check my bait, and uh, maybe recast a little bit. All right, my bait looks good. I'm gonna go and cast out, but this time I'm gonna aim for that little snag out there. Give that spot a shot. Oh, I got it. All right, there we go. Yeah, I mean, um... Wait, what do you think of that? Wee, whoop, there he goes. All right, yeah, let's. Oh, he's snagged up a bit. Ah, uh, he's wrapped up on something. 50 pound mono, so I'm gonna have to pull on this really hard, but it's stretching, and because we're up out of the dock, a lot of that line's out of the water, and it's going to shoot back at me like a rubber band. And they can really hurt. Oh, there we go. Well, I lost my bait, lost my fish, but I got my rig. Well, there we go. All right, see this little panfish? It's called a green sunfish. A lot of people think it's a hybrid between a bass and something else. It's not. It's a green sunfish. And it's got a much larger mouth than uh, bluegill do. So you can catch them on bigger baits. All right, we're gonna take that little bit of the green sunfish, chuck it back out there. I haven't gotten any action on this little whisker seeker rod, so I'm gonna pick it up and recast it out. If you're not catching a fish or getting a bite in like 20 minutes or so, pick up move spots or something. Well, while I was messing around with that other stuff, I got a big hit on the bobber and look what he did to my bait. Those catfish have crushing jaws and they just squeezed him so hard it popped his eye out. I got a bite. Come on. Oh. Come here, Tom. I'll let you reel in. Be 
Can we use that? Hold on. Hold on. Oh. Just keep him right there. Okay? Oh, he got away. Oh, you're kidding me. What did that happen? I it was right I there. I was just, I just grabbing the net and I look over and he's gone. Well, if things aren't working, mix it up. And I've been fishing this spot to the right here with just no luck at all. I've moved it around a whole bunch, but all my bites have been way out there uh, close to that snag. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch rigs and I'm gonna grab the circle hook off of this rod. And I'm gonna put it on the long distance Okuma rod and I'm gonna belt this thing out there, see if we can't pick up a catfish. Now I belted this bait really close to the snags and I don't want to lose another fish. So I'm going to leave my drag tight. Okay, it's called fishing locked up. But my rod will get stolen if, uh, if I'm not careful. So what I'm going to do is this. I got my fishing rod stuck into the rail so it can't get stolen. Oh, just got a big hit on the tall rod. Come on, hook up. Oh, oh, there we go. <laughs> Come down, rod. Down here. No, no more snags. No more escaping. Oh, this is playing these fish is so much fun on these long rods. Just gives them so much torque. You know, you can just kind of have more fun. Go on. Oh, you got him. All right. There you go. Thanks. Nice channel catfish. There we go. A little uh, three, four pound channel catfish. That is a perfect eating catfish, man. That's a sandwich. That's a sandwich catfish right there. We're going to go put him in the live well and uh, we're going to make some fish and chips out of this bad boy. Sorry, bluegill. It's about to get a little scary in here. Well, we had a little luck up there on the dock, but uh, I'm going to go down the shoreline a little bit and just see if we can't uh, pull something out with this float. Here, I'm gonna show you one other trick, one that's really good. Oh. You probably all know about using a forked stick as a fishing rod holder. You probably also know that you can easily lose your fishing rod that way if a fish comes and grabs your line while you're not looking. I'm gonna show you how to set it up so you never lose your rod. There we go, got our fishing rod sitting in a forked stick, but if a fish comes along, boom. Our fishing rod's going in the water. So I'm gonna show you how to prevent that. Just take a straight, smooth stick, sharpen one end, and then you just stick it right here and drive it into the ground. There you go, as simple as that. Fish comes along, grabs your rod, boom. It stopped and it ain't going nowhere. And when it comes time to play the fish, just grab your rod, lift it up. Well, I've been here for a few minutes, but not really seeing much action. So we're gonna go back to the dock and I'm gonna show you how to fillet that catfish. All right, we gotta let these guys go. Got my new cleaver here we're gonna use. I made this wooden sheath for it and I'm uh, excited to give it a try. So you flay a catfish, you cut along the top here, right next to the spine. Then you go down here from the back and then you follow the rib cage and then you go all the way over here and you can feel it too. You can feel that this is really hard and this is soft and meaty. And you can actually see the ribs right there right here you can feel them these are bony right here and it's soft right up here feel that nate yeah that's that is that's bone. hard right yeah and you can see the bone right here like this shoulder blade looking thing so you can go with your finger and feel right along the backbone the meat and that's going to be the line that you're going to trace with the knife catfish are really tough so dispatching them can be a little bit hard they can live hours out of the water so what you can do, either do is get up there with a pair of pliers and pull the gills out and let them bleed um, some people like to cut off their tail or their head and let them bleed that way um, I, you can smash them on the head if you have something metal and heavy like a hammer or my cleaver to do that um, but it's really easy to get spined by these things so if you're gonna be cleaning them you can go and take and clip the tips off the spines with your pliers here and then you won't get spined. I'm going to take my cleaver here and just go and hit him with the back end of the cleaver right there on the base of the skull. Now there's more than one way to skin a cat. Uh, you can take the skin off after you fillet them or you can do it um, before you fillet them. I tend to like to do it beforehand. So just go and cut the skin and get your get started. Then just come in with a pair of pliers 
and pull up a little bit of skin like that, and then just pull it off. Something about cold-blooded animals that when you touch something steel to their spine, they twitch. I think it's kind of like putting electricity on a dead frog. You see that? So what you do is you cut along here, cut along the ribs, and you pull up this flap of meat and work your way down the rest of the filet. There we go. Quite a bit of meat on a catfish belly. Just come in here and cut the stomach, but try not to cut the guts. And when you get the, the belly fillet, you end up with this U-shaped uh, chunk of meat with the little fins attached. Just come in here and uh, take those out. And there you go, you got some nice chunks of meat. So out of curiosity, let's see what this catfish was eating here. Yeah, this is his stomach. Ooh, a lot of stomach juice there. That's nice and gross. Well, that right there is a whole gizzard shad. And that is all that was in his stomach. Catfish really are predators. People think catfish are bottom feeders, and yes, they'll eat a lot of weird junk. But most of the stuff I find in their stomach, bluegill, shad, chubs, crayfish, that sort of thing. You can see here there's a lot of blood on the catfish fillet and a lot of people don't like that. There's two ways to deal with that. One is to bleed the catfish um, as soon as you catch it. The other is to fillet it immediately after you kill it, which is what I did. If you fillet it immediately after you catch it, the blood hasn't coagulated. So you just go and rinse it right off. It, it comes off really easy. If you kill the fish and it just sits dead in your cooler, the blood will clot and then it's, you can't really get it out of the meat. There you go, cleans right up. You guys having fun? Yeah! yeah! Hands down, the best time to catch catfish from the bank is sun up and sun down. But we're not gonna sit around and wait that long because I wanna go eat that catfish and dinner time is just around the corner. So we're gonna call it and pack up the gear and uh, I'm gonna show you how to make some killer catfish. All right, guys, we're back at the house. We're going to cook up that catfish. I'm going to make pub style British fish and chips. All right, first things first, I'm going to heat up some peanut oil. Turn that on a medium, low, medium. So, this is everything you'll need for classic fish and chips. You got your fish, salt, pepper, baking powder, all purpose flour, and milk. That's it. So simple. Cut the fillets into portion size. That is what I like right there. Now an optional step is to take the fillets and soak them for five minutes in buttermilk. You can also do this with like vinegar or apple vinegar or other things. You don't really have to do this and frankly, I skip it about half the time. Just take a bunch of flour, like what, four cups maybe, five cups maybe? Take uh, about a teaspoon of baking powder. We're gonna add about that much salt and we're gonna add about that much pepper then we're gonna take some whole milk we're gonna mix it up you want to help yeah you mix with this with the fork okay uh. hey, i actually love you helping you do it somebody else all right while nathan's mixing up the batter i'm gonna make some hush puppy batter this is really easy just get the hush puppy mix it's so good Okay, let that sit for about five or six minutes. Test a hush puppy here. Okay. That's how you Can I make one, Daddy? Yeah, sure. Can I try to get in. All right, those look perfect. Well, there we go, hush puppies. They're not British, but they're obligatory here in the States. You know, some things, when you make them fresh at home, it just tastes so much better. Other things, not so much. French fries are one of those things. The best French fries are cut 
fried, frozen, then fried again. I don't know why it is, but man, I like fried, frozen french fries over fresh ones any day of the week. Alrighty. Oh yeah. <laughs> Not go. Well, oh, that's looking pretty good. Let me get a whisk. All right, the consistency of the batter is super important. Too thin and it won't stick to the fillet. Too thick and it'll just clump on and fall off. It needs to be like that. Let me, and now let's taste test it. A little more pepper, a lot more salt. Oh, I'm so tired. Yes. When I was there, I was like, maybe. There you go, perfectly fried catfish, french fries, hush puppies, watermelon. Oh, huh. mm. oh. Hey Jacob, you like those french fries? Oh, he's just pawing those, he's not eating those. <laughs> well guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something new. If you guys wanna see more videos from the Catfish and Carp YouTube channel, don't forget to click subscribe and check out our Catch and Cook playlist. We have dozens of videos about catching and cooking all sorts of different animals. And we also have tons of tips and tutorials on catching more catfish. Check that out as well. We have a whole playlist. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to click subscribe. We post new videos every Saturday morning.